base. I can see myself, but uh, that's not such a pretty picture. But uh, um, and we're at the Vov Omen base. Oh man! Right now, if you remember from last week, what we were trying to work out, and some fascinating calculations this week, is. Um, the, the, the statement goes right up to the top, which said um, it's one, two, three, four, five, five lines down. Well, it says, Echod Bechov Echod Kolakotshin, Kivin Sha'ov Rualem Shona below Regolim, or Regolim below Shona over Baval Ta'ache. Let me explain that. What this means is we've been spending a lot of time thinking about Baal Ta'ache, which is delaying. Uh, whether it's various korbanos, could be stock as well, but let's talk about korbanos to keep it simple. A person says they're going to bring a certain korban to the Beis HaMikdash. They, um, they should bring it as soon as they can. In fact, they should bring it by the very next Yom Tov. But they, they are, there's an Avera of Bal Sa'acher, which means Lo Sa'acher Lashama, don't delay bringing it. And that applies... Um, there was a big machlokas about this, and we're saying three Yom Tovim. So as long as once three Yom Tovim pass, then a person has fallen foul of this Avera of Baal Ta'acher, delaying bringing that Korban to the Beis HaMikdash. Yeah? Now this price says something more. It says it can be either three Yom Tovim within a year. So imagine the person makes the nether just before Pesach, that he's going to bring this Korban, bring a shlomim, for example. Then he's got Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkot. Once the three Yom Tovim, in any order, according to the way we Paskin, then a person has fallen foul of Baal Ta'acha delaying bringing that Korban. Right? Now this price of those says something else. It says you can either have three Yom Tovim within a year, or you can have a year before you've actually passed your three Yom Tovim. And the question we had last week and we spent time on, how can you possibly have a year and not have three Yom Tovim in there? If you'll go from any date to any date in the following year, uh, and we're sticking with the view that we're looking at this week, which is uh, a year goes, this is the view of the Chachomim, as we know, Yacht site, for example, um, it's not dependent on days, it's dependent on the date. So if someone has your site on the 18th or the 19th of ER, he will have the yard site again the 19th of ER. How can you have a whole year going from one date to the next date in the same date in the, the following year and not have passed by three Yom Tovim. Reverse you could have. You could have three Yom Tovim and you haven't yet had a whole complete year. We explained that. You can have Pesach, Shavuos and Sukkot and you haven't yet had an anniversary. But how can you have it the other way around? And that's what the Brysa says. You can actually have a whole year and not have had three Yom Tovim. And that's where we pick this up today. Where the Gemara says, uh, let's pick this up. Rabbonon heichi mishkachas lo. Beginning of line is lo. It's just over halfway down the page. And it says the word lo. Yeah? And we're trying to work out according to the Chachomim, who say a year goes from one date to the following date. And if it's a leap year, you'll gain that extra month. But it goes from one date to another date. So if you've got a year, you must have had your three Yom Tovim in that year as you're going from one date to the anniversary the following year. How can you not have had? So we're trying to understand this Bryce that said you can have either three Yom Tovim within a year or a year before you get the three Yom Tovim in both those instances. So in other words, it's the earlier of... Yeah, mathematical terms. The earlier of a year or three Yom Tovim, you will feel full foul of Baal Ta'acher. And the Gemara is questioning, how can you possibly have a year without having three Yom Tovim? In fact, therefore, in your, 
your uh, your comment that you're making it's the the earlier of you don't need to say the earlier of just say three yom tovim and of course you've got the year how can you have a year without having three yom tovim in it says the gemara have people got that beginning of line is law mm-hmm. yeah ah as Rab Shmaya learned, and this is a very interesting, especially coming out of Shavuos, Atzeres, which is Shavuos, Po'omim Hei, Po'omim Shisha, Po'omim Shiva. These are the dates of Sivan that Shavuos can fall. That's very interesting. And Rashi says exactly that, Po'omim Shisha, Shehu Shisha B'Sivan, Yom hachamishim lo'oyma. Ah. Now you see, Shavuos is the only Yom Tov which is actually not fixed by the calendar. Well, of course, we know it is nowadays, but it's not really. What does that mean? It says you should count the 49 days. Usfatim lochem imochoras hashabbos, last week, Sedra. You count 49 days seven complete weeks, and then the 50th day will be Shavuos. Okay. A date is not given. Says Rab Shmaya, sometimes Shavuos could be on the 5th of Sivan, the 6th of Sivan, or the 7th of Sivan. That's a bit tricky, especially if booking up somewhere to go for Yom Tov. It can be on one of those three days. Says the Gemara Hoketzad, and please shout out if nothing, if something's unclear. Hoketzad, how can that happen? Shneim Meleim, ah, this is going back to pre-calendar days. Now we have the Luach, and remember we've spoken about that before. Remember Hillel the second. Um, most people say that was the year three five nine, three five eight, um, CE set up this wonderful calendar. We spoke about it last week. Um, And you've got, of course, the leap years in. um, So we know exactly from year to year when the Yom Tovim will fall. And in fact, most months go either 30 or 29, Mole and Chose. And the reason for that is it takes 29 and a half days, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment, approximately, for the moon to go around the Earth. So as it's 29 and a half, actually, and a little bit more, um, one month is 30, next month 29. Now, we have in our calendar, Nissan is 30 days, ER is 29, and then you're into seven. So that's because we have a fixed calendar, and we know when, and we say in particular, Nissan will be 30 days, or will be 29. Uh, Norman, sorry to interrupt. If you can hear me, we've lost your sound. Uh, Norman, please. Perfect. They, hello? Um, they would then, the Bezdin would announce, today is Rosh Chodesh. So it could be that it was a cloudy night the night before, and maybe the moon wasn't visible. In which case, you could have, therefore, a month being 29, the maximum of 30, but it could be 29 or 30 days. Says the Gemara. I'm going back to the Gemara again. Hoketzad, Shneim Meleim. Imagine Nisan and Er are both 30-day months. It's not in our calendar, I know, but imagine the... Uh, Adim, when they were spotting the moon and they came and were quizzed by the Bezdin, uh, there are two consecutive months of 30 days. What happens then? Shnei Meleim Chamisho. You then find that actually Shavuos was going to be on the 5th of Sivan. How does that work? Have a look at Rashi. Shnei Meleim. If I've got two complete months, that means they're both of 30 days. So I start counting the Omer on the 16th of Nissan. Okay? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, plus another 10, 
gives me, as Rashi says here, Shne Malaim, Nissen and Ear are both Mole. Hare Tesvov Yomi Minissen. Now don't forget the fiftieth day will be Shavuos. So I've got fifteen days of Spheros Wa in Nissen. I'm gonna have another thirty in ER because it's a complete month rather than a twenty nine day month, it's a thirty day month. Okay. So thirty plus fifteen gives me forty five. As Rashi says here, Molu lehu chamishim. Therefore, the fifth. When will be the fiftieth day? That will be on the fifth of Sivan. From my forty-five, I add another four, which is the forty-nine complete uh, cycle uh, of the Omer. And the next day will be Shavuos. So Shavuos that year, if I have two complete years, I will have therefore Shavuos on the fifth of seven keep your finger on the place in fact, i'm running out of hands here i'm afraid um in the rashi as we go back to the gemara so i uh, have you got the gemara i'll tell us palim hey palim shisha beginning of line is shisha sometimes it could be six and sometimes on the seventh of er hockey such name lame if they're both full months in other words two thirties then hamisha then Shavuos will fall on the 5th of Sivan. Shanaim Chaserim, if they are both Chose, in other words, both Nisan and Iyar are 29 days, Shiva, it will then be on the 7th. How, how does that work? I've got 29 days in Nisan. I'm starting counting the Omer on the 16th. So now what happens? That means I've only got 14 days in Nissen. I've got another 23. No, sorry. I've got 29 more. Days. I'm getting confused here. I've got how many? We've got 14 days from Nissen. 29 in ER. 14 and 29. Is somebody shout out? Can't hear anybody at the moment. Awesome. Can people hear me? No, yeah. Sorry, mate. yeah, you can hear me. 14 and 29 43. gives me 40, 43. Good, good. I'm still hearing people. 43. So that means that year, 7th of Sivan will be Shavuos. With me? Okay, Norma, I've lost the plot here. What I don't understand. Normally, a month is. It's alternative, Mole and Chose. So I don't right, that's because thing. we've got absolutely. It, it's got to. It's got to work out in the end. But if your if your your months are dependent on Adim coming, the Bezdin may well have two months at two thirties or two twenty nines. It'll have to come out in the wash a bit later on. You with me? You'll have to have two twenty nines to make up for it sometime. We we're just talking about the Tukufa when they relied on the Adim then. Absolutely. In the time when they're relying on the Adim, you could have Nissan 30 or 29, similarly for Ear 30 or 29. Okay. With me? So in which case, if they are both Chosser, and that's what we're saying here, beginning of the line is Chamisha, again. Shneim Meleim Chamisha, beginning of the line. If they're both Four months, two thirties. Then I'll have Shavuos being on the fifth of seven. Is everybody happy with that calculation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have fifteen days from Nissen. I'd have thirty from Ear. That's forty-five, and then I have the five days after that, and that's where my Shavuos will be. Okay, Shneim Chaserim. If they're both twenty-nine, when will Shavuos? Shavuos is always on the fiftieth. That's what it says. The fiftieth day after you've started counting the Omer. It's always that's fixed. The question is, what date is that going to be in the calendar? Shneim Chaserim. If they are both Chaser two twenty-nines, then it will be okay. Shiva. With me. I've got 14 days from Nissen. I've got 29 in ER, that's 43, plus another seven will take me to Shavuos. So that year, Shavuos is on the 7th of Sivan. Yeah? 
continues with Gurgamara, Echod Mole Echod Chosa, which is the norm and what we know and love, where Nissan is 30, ER is 29, it could be the other way around, but it doesn't matter. You then have, if it's 30 days, you'll have 15 days of Nissan, counting the Omer. You'll have 29 of ER. 29 and 15 gives you 44, and therefore it will be on the 6th with me. And that's what we've got today, because we do have a mole and a chosa, and Nissan is 30, and ER is 29. Are you with me? So back to the Gemara. The Gemara is now saying, in the days, pre-calendar days, pre-Luach days, pre Hillel the second days, you could have Shavuos on 5, 6, or 7th of Sivan. Tricky? Now look at the Rashi. Echod molei ve'echod chosa. Umishkachas lo. Ah, now we're going to solve our problem. What was the problem we're trying to solve? How is it possible to have a year and going from one date to the anniversary a year later and you haven't still had three Yom Tovim. If that happens, a person will fall foul of Baal Ta'acha delaying because it's the, the shorter of a year or three Yom Tovim. We have now got a possibility of having a year without having three Yom Tovim in it. How is that possible? Have a look at Rashi. Umishkachas law. Have you got the Rashi? Beginning of the line is law. Yeah? Hope everybody is with me. Somebody shout out. Yes? yes. yes. Shona one, below. Fifth, now we've got. Second. Now we've got Shona below Regolim. Could go. Let's have the best example of that. Shanaim Malayim. Imagine you have a two full months. So when will Shavuos be? The Ire Atzeres Bahay Basivan. Shavuos that year is on the fifth of Sivan. Okay. The Hikdisha Lamochros, imagine he said, I made this particular animal, Hektish, he said it was going to be a Shlomim. He promised he was going to be a Shlomim. He did that on the day, for us it will be the second day of Yontav at Eretz Israel. It will be the sixth of Sivan, the day after Shavuos. Okay? So the 6th of Sivan is not Yom Tov. It's the day after Shavuos in that year. Or the Shana Habo, the coming year, imagine, for example, there was Shneim Chaserim. Both Nisan and Iyar are both 29-day months. Okay, when will Shavuos fall then? The era at Seres, Bezayin Besivan. Then Shavuos now falls on the 7th of Sivan. So the previous year Shavuos was on the 5th. The next year it's on the 7th. Vahashono Maleo. Then I've completed the year. I've gone from the 6th of Sivan to the 6th of Sivan. Bio involved the Sivan. Misha Hikdisha from the date that he actually made the uh, the hectish, this animal hectish, or the uh, the time he said he would bring this animal as a corbin. So we do have an example. It's uh, we've certainly been uh, trying to work this out and going from uh, from example to example last week. So even we're saying here, it's possible to have a complete year and not have three Yom Tovim in it. And the example we've given here, according to Rashi, if Shavuos was on the... Uh, the first example, it was on the... What did we say? The fifth? The fifth of Sivan. He makes his ned on the sixth of Sivan. So the next Yom Tov will be... After Shavuos will come Sukkot. Then will be Pesach. When it comes to the 6th of Sivan in the following year, it might not be Shavuos yet. Shavuos, in that example, may be the 7th. So there we have an example where a person will sadly have transgressed the Alveira of Balta Acher 
although three of him tovim have not passed. You with me? Would that, would, would that work in the Golas, or does Baltacher not apply in the diaspora? I'm just saying, if you had the two days, I'm just trying to work out whether... Uh, it doesn't matter. Even in Golas, where we have... You, if you remember, we saw Tosfusen that says you've got to have three complete Yom Tovim. So if you made a neder mid Yom Tov, you'd have to wait till the next occasion. You were mid Yom Tov. So even if you made it in the sixth of Sivan, the following year, Shavuos hasn't even started. So it may be in Chutzla or it's the sixth of Sivan, will be day two, if you like, of Yom Tov. Yeah. He hasn't got to, he hasn't had a day one of Yom Tov yet, because next year, Shavuos will be on the seventh, and you've got to have com three complete Yom Tovim. Okay. Do you understand but, what I mean? If you have to have complete Yom Tovim, what is Pesach? Pesach, what's a complete Yom Tov for Pesach? Uh, from day one to the end of day seven. You've got to be able to have, so if you made a neder mid, mid Yom Tov, the following year, if you were going for the three, three Yom Tovim, you'd have to have mid uh, another half, half of Pesach is owing to you. You haven't got to get through a complete Pesach, one complete Pesach. No, you, you, yeah, so you, you can have a, you know, we'll say mix and match, you'd have four days from one year and then a few days from the coming year to make up that complete Yom Tov. You with me? So this example here is a wonderful example um, that where you've, you, what you're doing, you're making, a, a, say, you're making a neder on the sixth. It's after Shavuos, but you actually won't get to Shavuos when your year is up. So we therefore have found an example, even according to this view. We found examples last week, depending on different views. This is the final view that we wanted to bring in. Uh, to allow us to have a year without three Yom Tovim, and we have found one. That's what we're saying. Says the Gemara. Have you got it? Uh, beginning of line is Chose Shisha. Now, if you remember, going back, we've only brought this concept of a year without Yom Tovim on this Omud, and that was right on top. When we mentioned in Daf Dalad, we spoke about Baal Ta'acher. We spoke about Ta'acher being, Yom, it's only dependent on Yom Tovim, not dependent on this year. This was never mentioned until now. Says the Gemara, back to our Gemara, if there is this principle of the year, and it's learned from Sukkim, uh, have you got it? Begin line is chose. Echo more the echo chose, shisha. Uman tana de palig. Ah, says Rashi, there's a tanakama de lo iri bishona below regolim. He said it always depends on yom tov, three yom tovim, and you can never have three yom tovim. You, or the other way around, you can never have a year without having three yom tovim in it. How does that work? Says the Gemara, the Palig Ole. Who is the Tanu who disagrees with his principle of having a moving feast for Shavuos? We've just said, according to this view, Shavuos can be on all those different days. Says the Gemara, it's the view of Rav Shemaya. There is a view of Rav Shemaya, and that's why we only mentioned it here, because the previous, the Tanakama who said it's only dependent upon three Yom Tovim, once you've had a year, you must have had three Yom Tovim. It's Rab Shmaya. What does he say? And I know Rab Shmaya will explain. Uh, again, Oman Tana de Paligolel, the Rab Shmaya, because it was Rab Shmaya, I think, was the person we brought in earlier, who was of this opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, go up a few lines, and it was Rab Shmaya who spoke about this Shavuos being a moving feast. To Tony Rab Shmaya, Teres Pa'omim Hey Pa'omim Shisha Pa'omim Shiva. But there's somebody who disagrees with that, and that is the view of Achirim. What does Achirim say? Have you got it? Who, if there is someone who disagrees and said, Shavuos, even in the time of the Beis Hamikdosh, although in fact they were very interesting, although they were Adim, nevertheless, Achirim, he does Sanya. Achir, there's a Brysa. Achirim Oimrim. 
אין בין עצרס לעצרס, אין בין ראש השונה לראש השונה, אלא דלת יומים בלבד. The calendar, although there are eight in coming, it's interesting, the Bezdim would anyway make the Yom Tov, that's fascinating, but from one year to the next, אין בין עצרס לעצרס, אין בין ראש השונה לראש השונה, אלא דלת יומים בלבד. There are only four days if you go from one year to the next. Have a look at Rashi. What does that mean, there's only four days? Um, have you got the Rashi, Ella Dalad Yomim? Yeah, you got the Rashi there, Kosovri. They have over the opinion. La Oilam Kol Chodshe Hashona Echod Mole Ve Echod Choser. Wow. The months always go 29-30. Ve Ein Ma'abrim Ve Ein Ma'chasrin Shum You're not allowed to extend, and in fact, of course, it would be 2930. You cannot extend the month. It had to be on, I say, alternate, going from 30 to 29, for any reason. Now, one of the reasons we said once before was they even, they, they were very keen. And in fact, there is a possibility to say the Bezdin can make Rosh Chodesh whenever they like. And what they would always ensure, for example, Yom Kippur should never fall on a Sunday or a Friday. And the reason for that, actually it's quite sadly, was, was relevant, um, this past Yom Tov, I just heard from um, somebody over Rabbi Reuben Lanning, works in the, uh, sadly, in the Beis Oilom there, in the cemetery, in Bushy Cemetery, um, oh, yeah, a wonderful man, Rabbi Lan- uh, Lanning. Um, he was telling me that the second day of Yom Tov, if the second day of Yom Tov, yeah, we've got to keep two days Yom Tov in Chutz Laaretz, what happens if it, um, uh, can you have a Leviah on the second day Yom Tov? What I mean by that is, could you ask non-Jews to perform a Leviah for you on the second day of Yom Tov? Now, we don't normally have that. However, when you've got something like this virus take, happening, then there are instances on the second day of Yom Tov that you'd be allowed to ask the non-Jews to actually uh, have the funeral, bury the individual. If you're, very, if you're concerned about, say, let's say a virus or an, any other pandemic, epidemic, you'd be allowed to do that on the second day of Yom Tov. And very interesting, it sounds like there were actually this year, they, that halacha came into, very rarely hear that halacha being used. Normally you just wait for the Leviah for the following day. But it seemed like this year, on the last day of Pesach, there were actual funerals, um, and the second day of Yom Tov too, as it's Midrabonon, you are uh, under certain circumstances where you have, as I say, a pandemic, epidemic, um, a magefa, um, you could do that on the second day of Yom Tov. You'd be allowed, it would be a shvus to shvus. You're asking someone else to do the mlocha for you, um, and that's what you could do. Now, this, however, if it's Yom Kippur and then Shabbos, or Shabbos alone, you would not allow, unless it's really Sakonis, so Shabbos would not be a time you'd be allowed to do, uh, to have a funeral, unless, I say, there are extreme circumstances, but that's uh, very unlikely, and you'd be, I say, very unhappy to have to do that. Um, Shabbos, if you had a Yom Kippur and a Shabbos, then of course you'd having two days, one day after the other, um, and Yom Kippur would be stro- uh, stricter still than a normal Yom Tov. Um, so the concern always was that if someone passed away, let's say Yom Kippur was a Friday, and passed away just before Yom Kippur, wasn't time to do the Leviah, you then, in, under normal circumstances, you'd be waiting two days to actually do that Leviah. And you may not want to do that, particularly if you say it's hot weather. You may not want to wait two days. So what they specially arranged, although the Aiden may have come, uh, they would, and they had the power, the psukim, to say, Atem, there's a special posse to say the Chachomim, uh, and the, the Bezdin had the power to make the Rosh Chodesh when they want to. They would ensure that Rosh Chodesh would 
the way Tishri would fall, Yom Kippur would never fall on a Friday or a Sunday. So at least you would never have two days, two consecutive days, Yom Kippur and Shabbos or Shabbos and Yom Kippur. Now, what we're learning here, back to this Rashi, the, this view, a cherim of the opinion, kol echod echod chose. They are always a 29 and a 30. Ve'ein ma'abrin, ve'ein machasrim, shum chodesh. You do not lengthen and you do not reduce a month. L'tzorech, because you feel it's necessary, for example, the, um, the Yom Kippur falling on a Friday and a Sunday, that would not be sufficient reason to try and push off and make the, the uh, Tishri, chodesh Tishri start on a different date. With me? Vahavya, now, I don't know if people are familiar with the calendar. If you work out 29 and a half, and we'll get to the halakim in a minute, how 29 and a half, and somebody's got a calculator, I'm sure, 29 and a half, if you multiply that, I've got the, I did the, specially work this out as well, 29 and a half, if you multiply that by, 12, what do you get? Anybody shout out? 354. 354. Three, 29 and a half times? 12 is 354. Thank you very much. 29 and a half, that's right. You got the 29 will give you the 350. The half, that's not quite. 29 and a half, that's right. 29 and a half times 12 is 354, correct? Correct. Right, back to our Rashi. The Havil is 354 Yomim. There's a bit more than 29 and a half, and we'll get to that. I know Mervyn's got a nice uh, up the his sleeve. Osoyarath. 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 Well done there. Well done. We'll get to that in one minute. But the moment is 29 and a half times 12 gives you 354. Now, 354, it's not divisible by 7. Correct? Mm -hmm. 350 is divisible by 7. So 350 is divisible by 7. There's your 50 weeks. You've Wait. always, therefore, it, yeah? You're <laughs> always four days out from one year to the next. You with me? If there are 354 days or 12 months of 12, 29 and a half, you'll always have 354 days. Yep, I hope the Benji's boys are working this out. Nim says, Kol Hashona, it turns out every year is Shavuim Shalemim, complete weeks. What does that mean, complete weeks? 50 complete weeks. And you'll have a remainder in your division. Chutz midalid yomim. Vahein hadoichin kavias hashana mikvias chaverta. It will always be pushed from one year to the next. So if Rosh Hashanah was on a Monday, it will be four days later. Four days later. You with me? Every year from one year after the next. You with me? So he is of the opinion that. When you're going from one year to the next, you will always be four days later. But it also means this. If you're always going a 30-day and then a 29-day, when you have got Nissan and Ear, you will not be able to do the calculation we made before, having someone making a neder on the 6th of Sivan, and then the following year, the 6th of Sivan, being prior to Shavuos. You with me? If it will always be a 30 and a 29, which is actually in our calendar today, Shavuos will always be on the 6th of 7. So from one year to the X, it will always be the 6th of 7 will be Shavuos, not like we were before. The only difference will be, it will be on a different day of the week. You with me? So therefore, according to everybody else, we do not have a possibility of having a year without having three Yomim Tovim. If you were going from 6th of 7 to the following year, the 6th of 7, you would have had uh, the, your three Yom Tovim. You with me? 
Why would they have bothered with Adium if they if they said you if it's fixed like we have now? Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. You're, there's still there'd still be a mitzvah to be to for the for the Adim to see the moon. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but under these circumstances, they would always fix from one year, one year to the next. It's, it's amazing. Uh, they didn't have to do that, but that's the way they were. That's the way they were acting. Didn't, I mean, you're right. They may change this principle, but that's the principle they were acting to. And maybe it was it was hidden from people because they could change and go back to um, be Makadish totally RP Re'ir. But here they're saying they've got a fixed calendar which is taking always in four extra days, and therefore, according to that, you're going from one year to the next just with four days. The only question would be, well, what will happen if it's a leap year? Back to our Gemara. <clears throat> if it turns out being a leap year, then you'll have five days in between. Why is that? Have a look at Rashi. Kosova. <clears throat> we are of the opinion that Chodesh Ibor Oilom Chose was always a Chose month. So what's that mean? Twenty nine. As it's twenty nine. It means it's 28 is the complete number of month, of weeks plus one extra day. It was only pushed the year from one year to the next by one day, which is more than the four weeks. You with me? So if you're going from one year, according to this view, according, um, it's, we generally... Total followed the followed the Adim and it was the the Adim who were Makadish. But this view is holding that's not true. It was always going from one year to the next was always a four day difference from the sixth of seven one year sixth of seven the next year it would just be four day difference. We don't hold of this, but this is what this is holding this view. Uh, and if it will be a leap year, there will be five days going from one date in one year to one date in the following year. So, very interesting, this idea of the 354. The only problem with this, <clears throat> and this is picked up by Tosus, not here, but Tosus is in Dafchov. If you turn to Dafchov, <clears throat> now, as people may know, it's a little bit more than 354 days. And the reason for that is because a month is 29 and 12. And actually, before we go to the Tosas, turn to Dathkhof Hay. This is fascinating. So Al Gamora said there's always four days going from one year to the next because there are 354 days in a year. Have a look at the Gomorrah in Dathkhof Hay. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Have so you got a uh, Hello? I've just so so 354 is the total of if you have alternating 29 and 30, is that correct? Yes, tw because it is 29 and a half plus a bit we'll talk about. So 29 and a half times 12 gives you a 354. Okay, so that's that's incomplete weeks. So that's still not so that's why from one year to the next there were four days in other words Shavuos was not a moving feast a Shavuos was always going to be there for on the 6th of seven when you say four days so we all understand if it's Monday one yes. year Friday the next year Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday correct that's what you mean by Any, if you're working out at your site, that was very easy. The following year, you knew it was going to be four days later, unless it was a leap year. But there's there's a and little why, bit more than not, two. Yep, yeah, sorry. For why? All oh right. So instead of being on the Monday, it's on the Friday. It's four days later. So why? Why does that? Why is that not a complete year? Why does that interfere with Balta Acha? I don't. I don't understand that. The fact it's four I, I tell you, no, 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 no. We said before, in the case we worked out, it's possible to have a complete year and not have three regolim in it. Okay. And the example was where the person made the nader on the 6th of Sivan. Okay, all right. That's after Shavuos. And the following year, it's actually before Shavuos. 
Okay, okay. Says the Gemara, the reason why that was only mentioned by one view, because there's another view that holds that's not going to happen, because the sixth of Sivan will always be Shavuos, irrespective, because they will, Nisim will be Mole, and Ia will always be Choser. Okay. It's only if you can change, and of course we, you can change, as, as we know, the, the, the halacha normally is that it, yeah, it, would change, it could change now, we've got a fixed calendar, but prior to the calendar, you could have the Adim, and it could be a 229s or 230s. But if you are of the opinion that it goes, there's only four day gap, because it's a fixed, we know that Nissan is always going to be Mole, we know that Ia will always be Choser, then there is no way you can have a year without having your three Yom Tovim in it because the sixth of seven one year and the sixth of seven the next year will be Shavuos. You with me? Yes. Yeah, That's all we were trying to prove from that. That's yeah. all we were trying to prove to say that according to that view, if you knew what day the seven is always the sixth of seven was going to be Shavuos, there is no way you can have a year without three Yom Tovim. In which case... If you want to tell me the rule about Balta Acher, all you need to tell me is it is whenever three Yomim Tovim have passed. There's no way you can have a year which will be, which you reach first before reaching your three Yom Tovim. Have I lost you? So, I mean, is, is, it, is it dependent? You understand us? If you say that always Molly and always Chosser, Molly Chosser, yes. Six or seven, I understand. So therefore, back to the Balta Acha, which is where we came in, Balta oh, Acha will always be dependent on Yom Tovim, and that's it. Three okay. Yom Tovim could be much earlier than a year. So why but you're, there's no way before? you'll have a year without having three Yom Tovim in it. If you say, if you say it's always Mole and Chosa, why do you have to bring this 354 business into it? The extra four days? I don't just, that no, that's that's you're right. The, we've answered our question just by saying Mole Chose. The yeah. the statement where this was made about the Mole Chose was said when it was telling me the difference going from year to year. As an extension of the principle of a Mole Chose, Mole Chose, that would mean there will be three fifty four years that, sorry years, three fifty four days always in a year. In which case, I know for sure that the yard site next year will be four days later. So what? If, no, that's just the principle. You're right. You only say so what, but it, you'd know exactly when Shavuos would. And if you wanted to know what year, uh, you know, what day of the week, the, 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 the particular date would fall, it would always be four days later. Can that's all. Days, so as we said, if it's Monday one year, it's Friday the next. Well, what is Correct. Time? Correct. What does that make about anything? I'm sorry? Well, what difference does that make about anything? That, no, it doesn't. Just to tell you, the, the, it, it might be easy for somebody. It's just like extending the principle. If it's always Mole, he's just telling you there's always going to be four days. You're right. Um, maybe you'd like to know what day of the week next year where, you know, Pesach will be or, or Shavuos or whatever. You can, you'll know that. That's fine. But you're right. That's, that's the only reason. It's just an extension of this principle, that's all. But it's not quite correct, that's the problem. Because 354, it's not exactly 29 and a half. Look at this Gemara on 20 in Chofhe. Have you got the Gemara there? Uh, beginning of the line is Vesholach. Just over halfway down the page. V'sholach le Simona, David Melis Royal Chavikayim, full stop. Have you got V'sholach? Just over halfway down the page, Chofhei or Madalaf. Yeah. No? Hello? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got the place? Chofhei or Madalaf, V'sholach. Tonor Rabbonu, Pamach has Niskashru Shomayim Ba'odim. There were loads of clouds. The nire de Mustat Levana, and the, it looked like the moon had appeared on on a particular date. It was actually the 29th of the month. Fine. Kusfurim or Amloimar Roshchidish. They thought it was Roshchidish. Or Bikshu Bez in Lekatshe. This is just to prove about the 29 and a half. You'll see in a second. Omalem Rabban Gamliel. I'm sorry. Kach Mukublani mi base Abba. 
Me base Abba Abba. Wow, Robert Gumney is saying the name of the Zayda. I can tell you from my grandfather. He was saying, basically, according to his calculations, it was impossible that you could have seen the moon then. There are 29 days. There's your half. Two-thirds of an hour. There's your 40. Two-thirds of an hour. What's two-thirds of an hour? 40 minutes, and another 73 halokim. Yeah. Now, what's a, ch- a chalek? A chalek that they used was, uh, there are one, instead of we talk about 3,600 seconds. Absolutely right. 1,080 halokim make an hour. Yeah. One hour is 1,080 halakim. It's a wonderful achelek. They didn't go down to seconds. Achelek, that was good enough. In fact, it's wonderful. 1,080 is divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9, and 10. <laughs> wonderful. So it's, it's great divis- divisibility there. Um, and they're, they're always speaking about halakim. Now, se- if you can work it out yourself, got a calculator, 73 halakim, if you divide it by 1,080, gives you another four minutes. Uh, well, we got give, it gives you another no. What is? Can somebody do that for me? 73. It gives me another. You know, you're right. I take it back. Four minutes and a halek. 72 will be four. Will there be another four minutes? Correct. Yeah. 72 divided, in fact, every chedek is 3.3 seconds. So 72 will be your, there's your four minutes, and then you've got one extra one. So that's why you'll always find if someone is announcing the moilod, they will always announce it would be that extra chedek, and it's 29 and a half and 44 minutes and one chedek going from month to month. So in this example here, it were, Rabbi Gamliel said, you, you, it's impossible you've seen the moon already because according to my calculations, which I've already had as a tradition from my grandfather, and I he got it back, going back uh, to uh, say that Torah uh, Per, I have a tradition that that is the time it takes. And therefore, the time that you're saying you saw the moon, it's impossible you could have seen it so soon because in fact, you need 29 and a half and all of that. So in that tradition, it's a wonderful rule. So it's called 29, 12 hours, 44 minutes, and one chalek is the time it takes for the moon to go round the earth. Now, we just said before, according to this, I know, Simon, you said, well, you know, what difference it made? You're quite right. But he did say there's always going to be four days going from year to year. But we've got on top of that, those extra, if you take a, a month, is 29 and a half, and you've got those 44 minutes and one chalek. And all of that together in halakim comes to 793 halakim. Yeah? Your 44 minutes and one, have I lost everybody here? Mm-hmm. According to this calculation here, it's 40, 29, a half a day, Two-thirds of an hour, that's 40 minutes, and 73 halokim. Now, 40 minutes, yeah, 40, uh, uh, that's, so altogether it's 44 and one-eighteenth, yeah, one chilek. All of that together comes to 793 halokim. Now, if you add... <laughs> And if you multiply that by 12, besides having your 354, if you multiply up all those 44 minutes and a chalek, you'll get an extra eight hours and you'll get an extra 48 minutes. Yeah? Yeah. Have I lost everybody here? It, in other words, the time for the moon to go round the earth is not a straight 29 and a half with 354 days, therefore, if you multiply by 12, 
you've got an extra eight hours and an extra 48 minutes. And that, therefore, that's all going to add up, isn't it? In fact, those eight hours, in three years, you've got an extra day. Yeah? And if you do the calculation, those 48 minutes, <laughs> actually, you need, you need 70, 70 years. In 70 years, those 48 minutes have come to another day as well. Have I lost everybody? So back to Al Gomorrah. Al Gomorrah said that if you go from year to year, it's always four days difference. According to that view, according to the view, you're going 2930, 2930, there will always be four days between one and the other. If you turn to Dafchov, have you got Dafchov? The similar Gomorrah comes up there. Dafchov or Medalov? Have you got the lot, the Tosavus on Dabchoff? No, I've only got 6A and 6B. Uh, you only get, all right, I'll read this Tosavus, that's fine. Tosavus asks, the same Gemara comes up and it says, in Eirechin, the Gemara asks just one minute. In three years, you're going to get, from that extra eight hours, you're going to get another day. And in 30 years, those extra 40 minutes, because remember it's eight hours and 40 minutes over a whole year, those extra 48 minutes will also come to a, a day. Mishum, to, he's got there, those people who've got the Gemara in front of them, every year is more than the next year, not just four days. It's an extra eight hours and an extra 876 halokim. You with me? So those eight hours in a couple of years, you've got an extra day. And those interesting, those uh, 876 halokim, in, he says, they will also make up an extra day after 30 years. So the Gemara answers, you're quite right, every so often they will have to add, uh, so I'm only mentioning this because otherwise somebody will come back and say it's not actually 29 and a half, it's a bit more than 29 and a half. That was picked up by Tosus, it's picked up by the Gemara. In other words, every so often it, there will be more than just four days going from year to year. But the norm will be from year to year there will just be four days. But every so often, and particularly, I think it's talking about, about 70 years, and every so often they will have to add an extra day because it's not exactly 29 and a half, it's more than 29 and a half. And therefore, those extra, those extra hours and uh, all will add up and will come to an extra day. So the, the bottom line is how, this. How does the Shana Mubarak come into this? If you've got it, that's exactly what he said. If it's a Shana Mubarak, you've got an extra 29 days. Right. Yeah? So 29 days is 28 plus 1. In other words, you've got a complete week plus one extra day. Therefore, if one year, uh, let's say uh, Rosh Hashanah's, uh, let's go back to Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday to Friday, the next year, if it's a leap year, we'll go Monday to Shabbos. Right. You with me? Mm -hmm. That's what it, It's just a basic rule telling you that the according to the view we've mentioned here, which is a harem, the days, the years always go, one following the other, the yurt site will always be four days later, or if it's a leap year, five days later. It's not we don't really need this, but I often find that the Gomorrah just can you know can follows it through. For our purposes, we are saying according to this view, you're never going to have a year without having your three regolim. According to this view, I'm not saying we Puskin like this. You with me? A, a, the normal way will be as we've learned before, which means you can never tell when the Shavuos will fall because it always falls 50 days after Pesach. If it falls 50 days after Pesach, it could be on the 5th, 6th, or 7th of Sivan. According to the other view, no. It is fixed. It's always going to be on the 6th of Sivan, in which case you can never have a year without having your three regolim, in which case you don't need to mention that. And that's, in fact, why we've only mentioned it on this page here, because the previous views held that 
if you're going to have Shavuos on the 6th and the next day Shavuos on the 6th, there will always be a complete year. You can never have a year without three regolim. Norman, I don't understand. Is that... Norman. Yeah. The Ache, we're talking about Acherim here, right? Acherim. What is all this discussion about 354, an extra four days, an extra half a day, all these halakhs? What difference does it make? We know, according to Acherim, it's impossible to have a year without three. That, that's all we're trying to say. That's exactly the point. We're trying to say, how come we haven't mentioned that? We've mentioned it on this page, but there are other, there's a machlokas. He says there, um, where we brought this Gemara in, let's just go back to this Gemara. Um, let's go back to the beginning. Mishkacha Slole again. Shmaya, Shmaya. Hey, could a Tony rub Shmaya? Yeah. A teres pomim hey pomim right. Says the Gemara. There's someone who disagrees with that, and if they disagree with that principle, that because. It's always going to go from a mole to a chosser, a mole to a chosser. Therefore, your rule for balta acher will only need, you only need to mention one point, and that is three regolim. You can never have a year without having three regolim. So if I was to tell you when, are you, when, are you, when is the avera of balta acher, you only need to mention three regolim. So or rego yeah? Uh, so Norman, why have we spent the last half hour discussing four days plus a half a day halakim? The fact is, if you talk about mole chose, mole chose, it's impossible to have a year without three regolim. Full stop. Correct, correct. That's, and we just prove it. No, the question, we have to prove that. We had on top, there is a view that says you can have a year without three regolim. So we had to work it out. How is that possible? We have worked it out. And then we said, but there are other people who say it's in, the, the rule is only Sholosh Regolim. Why, did, why, why didn't they use the rule about the year? The answer to that is because that's never going to happen. Why is it never going to happen? Because the, the four-day rule. It's always going to be a mole chaser, mole chaser. You're right, it's not, that's not the standard, but we often find this in the Gemara. We have to spend those couple of lines to work out how that view will work. And we've we have worked it out. So you don't. So, so in answer so to your the, question, Simon, the, the Al Gemara we've been trying to focus and get an example according to all the views how you can have three regarding earlier than a year. In other words, you can. The rule is it's the lesser of three regarding or a year. And we then right. said, what do you mean? If it's a year, you're bound to have three. You only need to know the rule of three regarding. Says the Gemara, no, we've worked it out earlier. It's possible. If you're having saying Shavuos, is moving. However, there's only one person who says that. The other view, we've always learned until now, is it's going to be just three regolim. Nobody ever mentioned the year rule. And that is because if you're using the, uh, as we mentioned here, going, there's no difference between one year and the next except for these four days because it's always going 30, 29, then automatically your year and your anniversary next year will be uh, on the same date. Shavuos will always be on the 6th. And therefore, you can. it's true, you can never have an example of a year without having Sholosh Regalim. So what does, the, what does the extra eight hours add to it? Is it even normal? The, eight, the extra eight hours, that's right. In three years, you've got an extra day. So what does that? So what effect does that have then? So in, the, uh, oh, that's what that's what Tosfos and the Gemara said. That's why I mentioned it here. Although normally going from one year to the next, it's going to be four days. That does not allow for every so often they will have to add another day because of the eight hours and forty eight minutes. And therefore. And therefore, you can't always say there will be four days between one year and the next. Because when they decide to add that extra day, they will make a 29-month, a 30-month to add that. The Rachachomim will decide, okay, this year we're going to add that extra day. Then you'll find there'll be an extra day going from one year to the next. But there'll, so there'll, still, but there'll, still, be, um, there'll still be the three... You still won't have a shot of belief. Um, oh, no, no, no. Agreed. 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 You, will ne you, you, you don't have a problem about a year without 
Sholosh um, Golim, but you do have a problem. Somebody could have put their hand up, as they probably did, uh, and said, how can you say there's always, even if you're going mole chose, mole chose, you're still going to be short. You can't just say they're 354 days. It's like saying uh, 365 and a quarter uh, days, you know, the sun going around the earth, the, the, sorry, the moon, the moon, the earth going around the sun, you've got some extra, yeah? It's, it's not quite, you know, you, let's be accurate about this. And that's why we've got this moilid, as we know. There's not enough to this. It's just to get, it's just astronomical. So it's not enough committed to our discussion. It's just no, it's not. A, and, um, yeah, no, just for clarification and for truth, right. uh, when it says here they're going to be four days, the Gemara picks up and says it's not quite right because every so often, don't okay. forget the extras. The, yeah. you know, the, it's not 29 and a half exactly. It's 29 and a half and 793 halokim, which <laughs> converts to 44 minutes and a chalek. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's not quite right because every so often you will be adding an extra day. Now this, as you know, and uh, and that's your your gematria. Yeah. This seven hundred. I mean, it is quite amazing if you think about it. This gemara in Daf Chof, um, no, where but that was Daf Chof Hey, where they had this tradition of the seven hundred ninety-three. I think you can look this up yourself, gentlemen. Um, that is unbelievably accurate. Um, 20, with those extra halokim, there's 793 halokim, you get to 29.53059 days. So it's not 29.5, it's 29.53059. Okay? That is with those 793 halokim. How can you work out in the olden days when you didn't have Hubble? and you didn't have the, the telescopes, how do you work out the time for the moon to go round the Earth accurately? How do you do it? The way to do that is normally between eclipses. If you have an eclipse of the sun, yeah, and you're going to have to be spot on with your timing of this, if you have an eclipse of the sun, and then you have an eclipse of the sun many years later, yeah, if people are familiar with the eclipse of the sun, where the sun is exactly opposite, the, the moon is between the earth and the sun. If you follow that through and take go between two eclipses, then you can divide the number of months you've had, and you can see exactly the time it takes for the moon to go around the earth. Have I lost people now? How do you calculate it if you haven't got a telescope? the time it takes for the moon to go around the earth. So the way you, it's, a, it's very tricky, basically. And imagine if you've got, you know, uh, it's not, not in one person's lifetime. You have to have, people have taken note of exactly the time that happened. You can work out what the time is, is tricky enough. It's very difficult to work out the time. In fact, so much so that I see that NASA the, the way that NASA calculated, and people may know, anybody heard of uh, Carl Sagan? He was a, a cosmologist, but anybody heard of him? Absolutely. From NASA. Yeah. He was the chief scientist in NASA, Carl Sagan. He's got a book, Broker's Brain. Anyway, yeah, anyway he was a, they were, they were, how they calculated the time for the moon to go around the earth. You know what they did? They had a laser beam reflecting from a glass, I've got it written down here, a glass prism they had on the moon. And the American astronauts placed it on the moon for various things, <laughs> various calculations. What they did is they had a laser beam reflecting back to the earth. And with that, they could work out with these telescopes and everything else, um, and they had an automatic clock. It, very complicated, but they got to 29 point. Now, this is fascinating. Having done all that, guess what they came to? 29.53059. Funny that. And then there's another, I think a more uh, a German finding in Berlin. They, they, they were using some other research project where they were closing and the, the, the millisecond, um, 
They got it closer, but it still ended up with 29.53059. So that number, which is a tradition, and if you think about it, you know, how can they possibly work that out? This is the tradition that that's the time. And of course, it's, it's crucial that the Bezdin knew that and had that information so they could check the ADIM to ensure that ADIM had actually seen the moon and not by mistake um, accidentally seen something else in the sky. It could have been a reflection, especially in the summer months, you have the reflections with the sun, etc. Um, they may have seen something else. Um, so to ensure that, the Bezdin need to know exactly how long it takes for the, the, you know, the astronomy of it, and how long it takes for the, for the moon to go around the Earth. And uh, it's unbelievable. So this 793 extra halokim on top of the 29 and a half is crucial. And that's always called the Seyd Ho'iba. It's the hidden secret of the intercalating. And that's 793. And as um, Mervyn pointed out, you like to just repeat that, Mervyn? Osa, yeah, people familiar lamayadim. with the Posuk, Osa Yureach Lemoyadim. He made, yeah, Osa Yureach Lemoyadim for the Yomim Tovim. And uh, Mervyn will tell us. What, what, which one? What one means to tell, tell you what? Now what is the Gematria of Osa? Yeah, your, uh, this is Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld. Okay. Work that it's 793 because um, because Ase is also 375, Yurech is 218. The murder is 200, comes to 793, 793 over one. Oh. Beautiful, yeah, yeah, thank you. Well remembered there, Mervyn. Very good indeed. Uh, and Leah from the Shama, your mother. Um, yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Yubi Yosef Chaim Zonnefeld said that, that, that wonderful remez. Also, Yurech Lamadim is, in fact, that hidden 793. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, and, um, and as I say, this is a tradition which very, uh, I mean, how are you going to work that out? Uh, you know, going back those uh, thousands of years, the tradition of Balper, that it was passed down. And there's your 793, which I say is spot on, um, according to the calculations done today as well. So there you are, there's 793. Um, and also your Lamadim. And with that, gentlemen, I think we'll close for today. Uh, we're on to now, we move on to another slightly different thing, um, but we'll stop there. And I say, fascinating. I wish everybody well. Hopefully, I'll be able to see you better next week. Everybody well, I hope? Yeah. All good. Good, good. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Yes. Well, don't worry, when I edit this, it, apart from a very brief pause at some reason at the beginning, you're going to look like a film star, Norman, the whole way through. Oh, <laughs> good. And then without a beard. And Simon Herkhauser has suggested a new way of presenting it, uh, which would also include the, um, the actual... Uh, oh, text as well. Okay. Go now, ahead. Peter, can I... Uh, I, um, I don't want to bother anybody else, but Peter... Peter, still there? I'm here. Yeah, Peter, when you take me out of this, um, out of the me, I'd like to try the same thing again, using that same number, and let's see if I can link up next time. When you close this whole thing down, can you reopen it? Uh, I can't reopen this one, but I'm going to send you a separate invitation uh, to your email address. Okay, fair enough, and I'll pick that up immediately. Yes. And let's see if it does work, and then at least then it shows that there was something that happened, uh, some fault this time, I hope. Will do. Okay, thank you. I'll wait to hear from you. Thank you very much, and everybody well. Thank you. 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 Thank you.